Are you always this nervous? Only around people. His life had just begun. He's built up a tolerance to the drug. This operation splits your brain in half. This is the last chance I've got. The answer's no. Now he's fighting for a new life. I'm being sued by my 16-year-old son. Karen Valentine, Bo Bridges, a fighting choice. What's it like to be young again? I wish I were 17 again. I'm a kid. I'm a kid. 40-year-old Michael Riley's about to find out. This is great. Insane. Especially when he bumps into his old flame. This is some coincidence. You want me to believe that you are a 40-year-old who has simply aged very well. It's the truth. If you go to the prom with him, I'm never speaking to you again. Lindsay Wagner and Robert Urich in Young Again. Everyone's talking about it. He was an ordinary man until... Jeffrey Wilder is now an indestructible man. An accident transforms him into a human weapon. Think of the possibilities, Jeffrey. A man who cannot die. No police force can stop. No army can kill. His life is changed forever. I never get involved with anyone who shoots me. Now he's the only one who can stop a madman. Military genius. And save the world. I'm at. He's got a great new job, but there's one tiny problem. The kids. Kids? Is he talking to us? Everyone who works for me has kids. So he hires some kids. If we don't load, it's a gold mine. I don't like the sound of that. I'm having a little domestic crisis here. What a nightmare. Who are those brats next door? Cindy Williams and Bill Hudson star in Help Wanted Kids. Said it was a nightmare, didn't I? Yep. A family running for their lives. Another family reaching out. How can we? Cambodians coming to live with us in our house? What if we don't take this family? Together, they learn the meaning of freedom. The extraordinary true story of Lin Yang. Accelerometer. The Girl Who Spelled Freedom. Starring Wayne Rogers and Mary Kay Place. It all started 25 years ago. Sisters. With Haley Mills in The Parent Trap. Surprise. Both of them. Maggie, how did it happen? They switched places on us. Now she's back. Two. There is you and there is me, but no us. But this time, the tables are turned. Oh. Um. Oh. Sharon. Susie. Haley Mills stars Sharon. in Parent Trap 2. Disney premieres cinema. Doctor. Yes, nurse. Now, remember, give him his medication every two hours. Check his condition, and if anything changes overnight, call me immediately. Right. Doctor, 
something very odd just happened. Or it's probably nothing, but I... Yes, what is it? Well, I was just walking past Mr. Kohlmeyer's room, and I heard two people talking. Two distinct voices. But when I looked inside, there wasn't anyone else there, just Mr. Kohlmeyer. Nurse Roper, the mind plays strange tricks as the end draws near. But, Doctor, I'm not dying. He is. I know that, dear. I'm the doctor, remember? And the doctor says, if a man wants to talk to himself in his final hours, let him. Well, I think this is it. We've had a good life together. No regrets. You've been a good friend. And I want you to know that I've left you well provided for. Everything will be the same. Except I won't be around. Oscar, come on, please, don't talk like that. We're a team, you and me, remember? Sorry, Leo. I'm afraid you're gonna have to do a solo. <laughs> You, buddy. Yeah, but, but we, we've been together for so many years, Oscar. I mean, you can't leave me now. What am I going to do if you go? Enough of that, Leo. You got nine lives left to live. And I want you to live all of them to the fullest. Oh. You understand? Oh, Oscar. <laughs> Oscar. What will happen now, Dad? Well, we'll just have to wait and see, son. But where will we live? What will you do? Will you get a new job? It all depends on what Mr. Kohlmeyer wanted, honey. <laughs> local scene, a Birch Grove cat has inherited millions of dollars. Two weeks ago, millionaire Oscar Kohlmeyer died. Today, his will was read, and his cat has been named principal heir. That's right, his cat. Here's Ellen Rayburn with her report on the richest cat in the world. Leaving money to cats is nothing new. History tells us that Cardinal Richelieu of France and Three Musketeers fame left a fortune to his 14 cats when he died back in the 17th century. And in more recent memory, Dr. William Greer of San Diego left his two pets, Hellcat and Brownie, $415,000. But Hellcat and Brownie Greer are mere pikers compared to Leo the Cat Kohlmeyer, probably history's richest feline heir. Leo's fortune is worth more than $5 million and includes all this. The house, the car, the grounds, and a small staff, Gus Barrett and his wife, Louise, who are also the appointed executors. Here beside me is Leo Kohlmeyer, the world's most eccentric millionaire. Well, I guess the cat's got his tongue. But there is another side to this event. There's the sad story of the disinherited. Victor Rigsby, a hypnotherapist, is the only known blood relative of the late Mr. Kohlmeyer. If it weren't for Leo the cat, Mr. Rigsby would be the millionaire and not the four-legged feline. We went to his house to talk to him today. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Whatever Uncle Oscar wanted is, is okay by me. Besides, there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> what do you mean there's nothing we can do about it? Well, Mr. Rigsby, it all boils down to this. You've been left $25,000 pursuant to the will of Mr. Oscar Kohlmeyer, deceased. Now, that $25,000 is left to you free and clear with the proviso that you do not contest the will. 
which leaves the bulk of the estate to a cat named Leo. I is that a house cat? Of course it's a house cat. What'd you think it was? Well, I, I don't know. With five million, I expected something more significant, like a lion or a tiger. Maybe an ocelot. It's just a house cat. Now, isn't there anything you can do? Well, if you'd like, we could take a chance and contest the will. But, of course, that will take time. And if we lose, you lose everything. Now, that means $25,000. Are you willing to take that risk? We certainly are. Right, dear? Absolutely. Gross injustice has been done to me, and I am not going to take this sitting down. Sit down, Victor. <clears throat> now, if you do intend to pursue this course of action, you must be scrupulous in your activities so as not to take the case. Now, by that, I mean you must have no association with this cat. Don't see him, don't speak to him, don't communicate with him in any way, shape, or form. Uh, is that clear? Perfectly clear, Mr. Ottinger. We won't feed him, pet him, rub his belly, pull his mangy little tail. All right, Mrs. Rigsby. <clears throat> All right, I'll arrange a formal hearing as soon as possible so we can get a final determination. Is there no other option? I'm afraid not. A hearing is your only recourse. <laughs> Unless the cat dies <laughs> or vanishes into thin air. Victor, that's it. Paula, maybe we should just take the 25 grand. Forget about but all let of... that animal have the rest? No way. But the lawyers will take forever. Cost a fortune. And if we lose... Forget the lawyers. They're just our cover. What do you mean? You heard what the man said. There's no cat. There's no cat air, right? What are you suggesting? Animals disappear all the time. They get lost, run over, wolves eat them. Remember the old expression? There's more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You and I should have no trouble eliminating some stupid old cat. And all the money will be ours. Will or no will. Exactly, Victor. Now let's go. We have some planning to do. Gus, are you planning on eating tonight? Just a second, honey. I've been saying all week I'm gonna fix this. And by golly, tonight is the night. Why don't we just buy a new one, Dad? Ah, uh, bye, bye, bye. It's easy for you kids to say. Listen, why pay for something when you can fix it yourself? Oscar Kohlmeyer may have had $5 million, but he never threw away a dime. I mean, when something broke, well, uh, <clears throat> I was there to fix it. Of course, uh, now that he's gone, things don't break quite as much. You know, Gus, now might be the perfect time for us to take that vacation we were talking about. Vacation? Honey, we just took a vacation. That was three years ago. To the Inventors' Convention in Cleveland. We should see the world. Let's go to London. Or maybe Paris. Or the North Pole. The North Pole. Hey, hold it, hold it, hold it, everyone. Well, we can't go anywhere yet. Uh, now, just because things in the big house have quieted down doesn't mean that there's nothing to do here. Oh, Gus. And besides, Europe is expensive. All right, we'll discuss London later. Bart, have you finished your book yet? Almost. Well, almost isn't good enough. Why don't you just stick around and help me here, and then you can feed Leo his dinner. Again. Again. And then you can practice your reading. Yeah, that's right, son. You gotta be a good reader to get ahead. Son, you could be a doctor or a lawyer. Or even the President of the United States. Me? Uh, the only thing I know how to do is fix things. Ah! Uh, uh. So, uh, what's for dinner? On top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese, I lost my poor meatball when somebody sneezed. Ah. Oscar, it's just not the same without the harmony. Uh oh. Here comes that kid with dinner. Oscar, if he brings me liver once more, I'm coming to join you. Oh, no, he's got those books again, too. If there's anything worse than liver, it is listening to a geography lesson from a kid who can barely read. Here. I brought 
are your favorite? Fried lobster? Liver. Oh, I should have known. What's the matter, boy? Not hungry? Maybe you'd like a little milk. Milk? After years of the finest champagnes, he's gonna have to do a lot better than that. Not thirsty either, huh? I know what you need is a little attention. I'll reach you for a while. Oh, that's very exciting. That's, that's wonderful. Mmm, yes. First he starves me, now he tortures me. Everyone says I have trouble reading, but I'll show them. It's geography, Mr. Leo. You'll like it. The long guest river in the United States is the Mig, Miggy, Mighty, Miss, Is, Is, Ippy. It is over two, three, zero, zero mi miles long. Pretty good, huh, Leo? I'm really entertaining you. Ah, uh, five million bucks, you'd think I could afford some dancing girls. This kid is driving me crazy. And days of the Pia, Pia, Pioneers, the Miss Mississippi was traveled on by many ste steam, steam baths. Steam boats, for crying out loud. Oh, yeah, steam boats, thanks. Hey, who said that? Yes, yes. In the days of the pioneers, the Mississippi was traveled on by many steam boats. You can read. Of course I can read. And you could, too, if you would only pay attention and learn to concentrate better. You can talk, but... Uh... That's right. And I can see and hear and smell and touch, just like you. Correct that better than you. Now you bring that book over to the table before you drive me bananas. All right. Now you sit down show you a few simple steps to reading. One, put the book on the table and sit facing it. And, hey. Two, stop wriggling around. All right? And three, you can always go back. After you've sounded out all the words, read the sentence again until you understand what it means. Then go on. But that's so slow. Trust me, kid. With practice, it'll go faster. And four, if you're stumped, ask for help. I mean, you must have known steam bath was the wrong word. Yeah, but sometimes these books are so weird, you can't even tell. Ask anyway. OK, should I start over? Yeah, but later. In the meantime, you and I have another subject which needs to be discussed right away. So, have you got all of it? I think so. French champagne, Dover fillet of soul, veal corduroy. Cordon bleu, cordon bleu, please, no mistakes. You'll have me eating someone's pants legs. Don't worry, Mr. Leo. I'll figure out some way to get you all the things you like, even if I have to dig into my piggy bank. Not necessary. I'll pay for it all. I've got a cookie jar full of petty cash. Oh, well, uh, one other thing. I don't want you telling anyone where you got that list from, or that I'm helping you with your reading, or that I can talk. OK. Promise? Promise. Now, get the heck out of here. I've got to see if I can find something tastier to eat than liver, like uh, one of Oscar's old shoes. Bye, Mr. Leo. Ow. Ow. Ah. So sorry. Ow. Ah. Can you see anything? What's he doing? I don't know. I don't know. It's too far. It's too dark. All I can see is that Barrett boy coming out of the cottage. I wonder what he's doing there. They're feeding that thing. Come on, we gotta get closer. Come on. Quiet. Jerk. Well, well, well. If it isn't my good friends, the Rigsby's, I have to give them a proper welcome. Come on. Shut up! Papa! <laughs> 
my promise. I know I wasn't supposed to tell anyone, but I couldn't sleep, and Veronica's just my sister. Well, it's not like she's a real person or anything, so I went across the hall and told her about you. She doesn't believe me. She thinks I'm lying. Talk to her, please. No, I don't feel like talking now. You do talk. I heard you. Could you always talk? How did you learn? I swear you to secrecy, and then what do you do? You go and you tell the first person you see. I'm sorry, Mr. Leo. My privacy is very important to me, but since you're already here, I guess there's no use denying anything. Now, you want to know if I could always talk? Well, could you always talk? Not when I was born. I had to learn. Ditto for me. Now, good night. Close the door on the way out. But I want to know. How did you get this way? All right, all right. I can see I'm not going to get any sleep until I tell you the story of my life. <laughs> Uh, get comfortable. It all began a very, very long time ago. You see, I'm much older than ordinary cats. I'm very unusual. My mother was a fine cat, perfectly normal, proud, clean. Good example of the domestic shorthair. Right after I was born, my father ran off the bum. My you know, mom said I, I had his markings. My brothers and sisters and I were raised in the back of a butcher shop. It was wonderful. But childhood doesn't last forever, and when I was one year old, Mom sent me off to fend for myself. I ended up living with the dock workers on the piers, but I knew there had to be more to life than fish and rats. <laughs> so I entered the university in quest of knowledge. The students were very stimulating, very generous. There was always a lot to learn and scraps to eat. It was an easy life. But what about talking? Apparently, it was a talent I always had, except I never knew it. Never until I met Oscar Kohlmeyer, that is. I was out roaming the countryside when I spotted Oscar's diner and decided to drop in for a quick bite. I entered the diner and saw Oscar for the very first time. Spaghetti. All covered with the... Ah! <coughs> All covered with cheese. Most of the poor meatballs. Huh? When somebody sneezed, it rolled off the table and down to the floor. Lost my new carpet and right out the door. Ah! Right off the bat, I knew that here was a man who really needed me. Quick, the oven! Thanks. Did you say? 
say that? Uh, well, I, well I, I guess I did. Oscar was shocked that I had spoken, and I was too. It just came right out, and we got to be real good friends. That sounds wonderful. But what about the money? Where did that come from? And this house and everything? Ah, uh, that's another story. You see, Oscar didn't become a rich man until we had been together for two years. It had to do with the diner. Oscar owned it and all the land around. It was a strange place for an eatery, but Oscar had bought it cheap. What we didn't know was that the time had come to build on the surrounding land, and all of a sudden, Oscar's property was prime. What'll it be, fellas? We want to buy your diner. And we'll give you $50,000 for it. <laughs> $50,000 for this diner? How about $60,000? No, make it $75,000. We can be very generous. But what do you want with a diner? It's not the diner we're interested in. It's the parcel, the land. Hey, you give me $75,000 for that? Make it $80,000. Ah, think about it. Oh, uh, excuse me, that's the, uh, the bread man. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Don't go away. <laughs> you think we juiced him up enough? We better have. We're in up to the hilt. Without this plot of land, there'll be no highway, no shopping mall, no town. Anyone who takes 80000 for something worth a couple of million bucks deserves what he gets. <laughs> he didn't have any pumpernickel. <laughs> okay. That was about... Uh, where were we? Somewhere in the vicinity of $80,000. Uh, not now, Leo. I'm busy. <laughs> What are you trying to do? Cut that out. Oh, all right. Would you excuse me just one more second? <laughs> Fellas, I'll be back in just a second. All right, now. What is this all about? Oscar, hold out. I'm telling you, they have a lot more money. What do you mean? When you went out, I heard them talking. This is really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. See, those guys are taking you for a chump. You gotta keep raising the ante. I promise I'll let you know when to stop. But Leo... Trust me. I've taken the liberty of bringing a contract with me. We'll just fill in the blanks. Great, great. Uh, but I'm afraid 80,000 is not quite enough. OK, uh, let's make it 100. Uh, no, I'm afraid that's not enough. Mr. Comar, I don't understand your sudden change in attitude. Now, we're being more than generous here. Remember, there are plenty of other lots where we can set up our business. 125000 our final offer. I'm sorry, that's not enough. Are you sure you don't want to reconsider? That's a lot of money to kiss away. I'm sure. Then good day, Mr. Colmeyer. $125,000 out the door? When they come back, ask for one and a half million dollars. Are you out of your mind when they come back? We've reconsidered, Mr. Komar. How much did you have in mind? Million and a half dollars?
That's reasonable. And I get to keep the mineral rights. And it was a good thing that he did, because as it turned out, there was oil on that property, and that is where the real money came from. Listen, it's Dawn. I think you better get home. And remember, kids, don't tell anyone, I mean anyone, that I can talk. We won't, Mr. Leo. Bye. And another thing, please don't call me Mr. Rough trees that need pruning, a broken sprinkler. Uh, look, we'll, we'll go away as, as soon as I take care of everything here, Louise. But, Gus, we never go anywhere. Well, and neither does that crud that's been clogging up the garbage disposal. But I'll change that in a second. I'm finished. I'm through. I don't want any dessert. I'm gonna go up to the big house and feed the cat. Then I'm gonna practice my reading. Sure you are. No dessert? Hold on a second there, Buck. Are you feeling okay? I'm fine, Mom. I just want to go. Leo's probably hungry. Hey, how's the little fellow been doing up there on his own, son? He's fine, Dad. And this is Mr. Kohlmeyer. But I'm going to take real good care of him. Can I go now? Oh, sure. But slow down a little. Ah, reminds me of myself when I was his age. I mean, always on the run, getting my hands into things. Uh -oh. Fine. Tonight, no mess ups. Right, right. We sneak in quietly, grab the animal, and leave. Victor, I can smell it already. The cat. The money, the money! Leo! Oh, boy, at last, supper time. What'd you bring me? Shrimp scampi? Chicken cacciatore? Not exactly. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find anything on your list, so I brought you this. Uh -huh. Cheeseburger and some french fries. Oh, how unassuming. Oh, I let you down again, didn't I, Leo? No, 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 it's quite all right. I, I, I'm sure you did your best. Isn't any other way for us to get you some food? Hey, you know something? There is. Oscar and I used to do this all the time back in the old days. Follow me. Where are you going? To culinary heaven, my boy. Just a phone call away. <laughs> Uh, yes, I would like a large pizza pie to be delivered. And uh, what you want on it? Double anchovies, light on the sauce, and, uh, hold the cheese, will you? Hey, you want any crust? Well, now that you mention it. Mm, mm, deliciosa. Mm. The Coliseum in Rome was a place where the gladiolas fought. Mm. What's that, a dueling flower show? You are not concentrating. Now sit up straight and read it again. I don't know why reading is so important anyway. Hey, reading is the door to knowledge, Bart. And unless you know how to open it, you're going to miss out on a lifetime of amazing things. Now start over. Paula, maybe we're making a mistake. I'm a hypnotherapist. I have to stir patients who need me. They were fine before they met you. What about my reputation? The only reputation you need to worry about is that of a multimillionaire. Paula! Move! Paula! Ah! Quiet! The... Early Romans, bird insects. That's incense, Bart. Now stop reading, we have company. Huh? It's the Rigsby's. I knew they'd be back, I just knew it. The Rigsby's? I don't like them. She yelled at me last Thanksgiving when they came to visit Mr. Kohlmeyer. Now you collect your books and leave, and I'll, I'll handle them, but just don't tell anybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. But Leo... Now, Bart... All right, but be careful. <laughs>
Good. He's gone. Let's go. Hold this. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah. Ah! Shh, shh. You're gonna make him nervous. Get the food ready. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Guess what I have for you? You. Never put raw liver into someone's hand when not looking. You wanted it? You got it. There he goes. After him. Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, oh, my God. Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Sheldon, you really showed him. Well, I guess that ought to hold him for the night. Hurry up, kids. You'll be late for school. Bye, Mom. Bye. Bye, Mom. Bye. Where are you going? Up to the house to check on Leo. Wait for me. As a matter of fact, something terrible did just happen. I was eating caviar on the Riviera with the feline of my dreams when you rudely awoke me. We're sorry. We were worried. What did the Rigsby's do? The Rigsby's? Oh, those Rigsby's. I led them on a wild cat chase they will never forget. And wait till they come back tonight. They're coming back? They didn't get what they wanted, namely me, so they'll be back. What do they want you for? I think the word is greed, Bart. Maybe I should stay with you all day to protect you. No, no. What I want you two to do is get off to school before you get in trouble. I can take care of myself. After all, I'm a cat. I'll always land on my feet. Then I'll come back after school. Then we can spend some more time together. Bye. Bye. How was I supposed to remember all those animals were stuffed? Sure, Uncle. Didn't you ever visit him? No, you never let me. Did you bring the chlorophyll? Right here. Gas mask? Check. Gloves? Now remember, when I tell you to shoot, shoot. Not a second before, not a second after. Got it. I'll have the cat carrier. I'll be responsible for getting the cat. You just zap them good. Right. And don't forget to take everything with us. No one must know that any... Please get on with this already. By the time we get out of here, inflation's gonna be eating up the five million bucks. Look, there he is. I'm ready. Hmm. 
Now remember, don't shoot until I say so. Hurry up, he's gonna get away. Stay with you in a second. Here, kitty. Here, kitty. Here, kitty. Nice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now shoot, Paula. What? Don't make noise, Paula. Whatever we do, don't make noise. That's right, Paula. Don't be such a drag. <laughs> no, you know. The barrier was beyond me. Paula, I've been thinking. The wonders never cease. There's no reason why we have to be the ones to sneak into the mansion and take the risk of being seen. You know my patient, Howard Piggins? I think he's the man to do this job for us. Pagan? Victor, that's brilliant! Oh, Victor, you're here! Get me out! Get me out! Okay, Pagans, you're free. Oh, Howard, if I had known, I would have come sooner. Oh, thank you for coming. Remember, Rigsby, he's in your custody. I understand, sir. Are you sure we can control him? Absolutely. He's my best patient. When he's under hypnosis, he listens to everything I say. We hypnotize him, send him after the cat. Nothing will scare him. Once he's got the animal, he'll forget everything. We'll be able to come up with a great alibi. Ah. It's getting worse, Rigsby. Every day something else goes wrong. The nights aren't any better. I have these awful dreams. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's nice. Angry and nervous all the time. It's like any minute I'm about to. Oh, don't you worry, Howard. I'm going to hypnotize you out of all that in no time. Rigsby, I've been thinking, maybe maybe hypnosis isn't the answer. Maybe we ought to try something else. No. No. What do you mean? Remember I first came to you, I had this simple little problem of daydreaming all the time. People at work thought I was lazy. So you cured me with hypnosis? That's right, Howard. You got me to tune out everything but what I was working on. So I tuned out my boss and got fired for insubordination. Forget that. That was in the past. And he hypnotized me out of concentrating. I became a terrible insomniac. I used to take these long walks down by the mall and think about everything I, I ever wanted in life. And I became a klepto, got arrested, and my wife left me. Did I mention to you the violence? Yes, yes. Last month you broke my window, but Howard, hypnosis can cure that. Stick with the try and true, shall we? I don't know, Rigsby. Listen, I'm afraid. Yesterday I got thrown off a bus and thrown out of a theater. I, I think I ought to go back to daydreaming and being out of touch with myself. You will. You will. You have nothing to worry I about. Will. Just relax. Remember, it is always darkest before the storm. Before the dawn? You mean it's 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 always quiet before the storm and darkest before the dawn? Storm, dawn, whatever. The important thing is, I'm here to help you. Remember, your hypnotherapist always knows best. Thanks, Rigsby. I don't know what I'd do without you. Just relax. Concentrate on my voice. Rest your mind, close your eyes, and let yourself go, Howard. Let yourself go. It'll be good for you. Chase your thoughts out the window. Are you asleep, Howard? Yes. Good. Forget about chasing people. Do you hear me, Howard? Yes. What I want you to chase is a cat. Concentrate on a big house, high on a hill. Inside this house is a cat. This cat represents all of your troubles. You must go to this house and pack up all your troubles in a cat carrier. Once you have the animal, you will feel free and released. Bring the cat to my house. Do you hear me, Howard? Yes. I get the cat and all my troubles go away. The address is in your coat pocket. When you wake up, take it out and get me the cat.
bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. It ever so humble, there's no place like home. Honey. Yeah? I don't understand Bart. He's up in the big house all the time. What does he do up there? Oh, well, uh, a boy needs his privacy, Louise. A place he can relax, concentrate, get some of his homework done in peace. But he used to hate doing his homework. How could a child change like that overnight? Yeah, kids change all the time. I'll see you later, guys. I'm going over to Debbie's. Oh, wait, Veronica. Have you noticed your brother's been acting peculiar these past few days? He's been acting real normal lately. I mean, why does he go up to Mr. Kohlmeyer's old house all the time? Beats me. Maybe he's redecorating. Oh. Uh. Louise, well, I, I just want you to know that as soon as everything settles down a little more, uh, we, we we will take that trip to Europe. Uh, I want to go just as much as you do. Oh, okay, Gus. I'll try to be more patient. Okay. Ta-da! Oh, that's wonderful. You did it. <laughs> Check on Bart now. So Rigsby says, nice, Kitty, and I yell, shoot, Paula, and run like crazy, and she lets go with a long blast of chloroform right in his face. Gee, Mr. Leo, you're wonderful. You're my best friend. You know, you're okay yourself. You know something? You and I are gonna do big things together. Not just reading and writing, but math, I think science, maybe even a little French. I have a motto. What is it? Inch by inch, life is a cinch. Yard by yard, it's very, very hard. I'll always remember that. Come here. I want to show you something. There's a book I want you to get for me, but it's on the top shelf. I'm afraid you're going to have to scale the cliff somehow. Way up there? Well, come on, Bart. You can do it. Just be careful and take one step at a time. Go ahead, Bart. <gasps> Did it. Now what? Find the book called Wealth of Nations. Well... Wealth of Nations. Here it is. Very good. Now, remember that book. There's money in it. If you ever need it, it's yours. Do you mean it? Certainly. Oscar was always extremely generous with his money, and I intend to be, too. Oh, someone's here. Bart! Bart, are you here? Uh-oh, it's Mom. Bart? Bart, where are you? to that statue? I, uh, I don't know. Well, I think I do. You've been roughhousing with the cat. Now we're going right back to our house. You will spend the rest of the evening in your room thinking about what you've done. Good old shows like Lassie and Flipper and Gentle Ben. Now those were actors. I, I guess I better go check on the kids. See, I was taking it. Oh. Huh. Oh. I mean, I, I, I need a little fresh air anyway. Hey, kid, wake up. Leo, you got out. Of course I got out. I'm the Harry Houdini of the furball set. And you were all alone, so you came to see me? Well, you know, I mean, I, I didn't want you to worry. I mean, thinking I was all locked up for the night. I think about you all the time, but I'd much rather be with you. I guess you're starting to grow on me, too. So, this is where your family lives, huh? That's quite, uh, 
compact, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's nothing like your house, but then we don't have five million dollars. No, I suppose it isn't anything like my big, old, empty, lonely house. Gee, Leo. Maybe you'd like to stay here tonight and be part of my family. Stay here? With you? Well, I don't know. I suppose one night. Art, I thought you were going to sleep. Now, son, lights out and heads down. Uh, I better take a rain check on this family business. Okay. But I love you. The best alibi in town were completely covered. Excuse me, do you have any club soda? No. I knew we couldn't trust that weirdo. This is your fault, Victor. My fault? Yeah. Every time you ever tried to get Piggins to do anything, you always made him worse. It's like that last patient of yours, the one who was afraid of the water. By the time you got through hypnotizing him, he ended up jumping in the walrus tank at the aquarium. That man was beyond help. You're beyond help. I should have known it would come to this the day you flunked out of medical school. I did not flunk out. I withdrew for health reasons. Right. Insufficient brain. Oh, those look yummy. Howard. Oh, the police. Everything all right here? Fine, Reverend. Here, have a weenie. Howard, don't be ridiculous. You, you don't need the cat anymore. You're fine. No, he's mine. And as long as I have him, I'll never need you again. Great plan, Victor. Uh. <laughs> The hunt for Leo the cat continues. Even as we speak, search parties are beating the bushes looking for him. <laughs> And of course, the accusations fly back and forth. What are you doing? Conspiracy? We are shocked to think that anyone could do such a thing to a, a wonderful cat like Leo. I am a cat lover, as you can see, and it makes me sick to think that anyone could have harmed that cute little fella. Right, Rusty? Come here, sweetheart. Oh, yes. You know, Rusty here is just as upset about this as I am. Well, so am I. I mean, we didn't know Leo personally. But if he's anything like Rudolph here, I'm sure we'd love him, too. Rusty. Rusty. I think the blame in a case like this lies with certain parties responsible for Leo's welfare. I... I wouldn't be surprised if his caretakers did something terrible to Leo just so they wouldn't have to take care of the poor, precious thing anymore. <sighs> How do you we're think about being well. responsible? Well, Mr. Uh, Rigsby is wrong. My, my wife and kids took really good care of Leo, and in fact, we, we have nothing to gain by his disappearance. But Mr. Rigsby sure does. 
So the fur keeps flying as both sides in this catfight get their licks in. And to make it all the more exciting, a reward of $100,000 has been posted by the estate for the return of Leo Kohlmeyer safe and sound. If you see a cat that looks like this, bring him to the 12th precinct in Birch Grove and collect your reward. <laughs> Next, please. Here, here he is. Oh, here's Leo. I found him by my garage last night. He must have been there for days. Oh, oh cold and squiggly. I fed him good. No, I'm sorry. That isn't Leo. Sure it is. Like I said, he's a bit squiggly. Hey, uh, maybe under better light. Okay, lady, let's go. No, no, wait. I promise you, this Come really on. is. This is Leo. <laughs> I got him. I, I got the fella. He, he put up an incredible fight. I had to chase him all over the place, but... Uh, there he is. I can't do this much longer. We've got to go through with this, Louise. Thank goodness it wasn't a million-dollar moose that got lost. What can we do? It's my friend. I'm sure Mr. Rigsby took him and we've got to find him. But what can we do? Everyone in the whole city is looking for him. Maybe he'll escape and come back. Maybe. I'm sure if he's still alive. What do you mean, if he's still alive? Bart, you've got to face it. If I were Mr. Rigsby and I kidnapped Leo, I'd get rid of him right away so there'd be no evidence. You would? I wouldn't, but Mr. Rigsby would. Thought I'd find you two here. Any news? I'm afraid not. Maybe he'll turn up. There's always hope. Remember, your father and I and the police are doing everything we can to find him. There's something else I want to tell you. Mr. Rigsby has set a hearing at 4 o'clock this Friday concerning the estate. Without Leo, he's going to win hands down. If that happens, we're going to have to move. Move? That's only a week away. Where will we move to? Well, your father is looking at a house in the valley right now. Sort of a fixer-upper. Dad? With a fixer-upper? Oh, Leo, where are you? Trapped like a rat. Oh, I gotta find some way to get out of this place. Oh, no. Here comes that fruitcake again. Straighten out my life. Oh, brother. Is this guy for real? I know you're under there. You can't hide forever. It's time to eat. If you don't eat, you'll die. And I can't let that happen to my new friend. Hmm, what's this? All right. I'll leave the food here for you. You can come out when you want. Bye, kitty. What a great day. 
Well, well. Yeah, I wouldn't take much more to break out of this hooskow, and then after that, oh, I do believe it will be time to reach out and touch someone. Paula! Uh -huh. What are you doing, dear? Get rid of these disgusting rags. Some of that stuff is brand new. Victor, in a few days, we'll be millionaires. From now on, we were only the best. Goodbye. Goodbye. Paula! Uh, I gave you this as a gift. Oh. I'm still worried about Piggins. Oh, forget Piggins. He did us a big favor by disappearing with that cat. It takes us completely off the hook. What if something goes wrong? What if he doesn't get rid of the cat? What if the police find out? He's my responsibility. Pick calm down. Now, Piggins is gone. And so is that cat. In two days, you and I are forever rich. So relax. There is nothing to worry about. Cheer up. When you go through all your stuff, you're bound to find things you've forgotten you've ever had. It'll be like finding new treasures. Do we really have to move? Oh, it'll be okay, Bart. Well, moving is, uh, well, it's like, like a vacation. But the Rigsby's took Leo. Well, we don't know that for sure, and it's not nice accusing people without solid proof. Well, that's, that's right, son. Hey. Well, let's just be thankful for the good times we had here together, huh? Uh, well, anyway, as long as we're a family, it doesn't matter where we live, right? Right. Moving will be fun. Whoa! Yeah, so fun. The explorers stood gazing out over the mysterious valley that they had come so great a distance to find. As the drums beat slowly, Dr. Kramer said to his friend, this, my countryman, is all we'll ever need. The end. Leo, wherever you are, I could have never done it without you. Seen the mansion, let's get your opinion on the cottage. Uh, yes. Uh, pardon me. Uh, hello? Hello? I'll try to see through the shabbiness for any possibilities. Uh, excuse me. I Mr. suppose Green, the, the first you... thing we could do is sell off the interior. Mm. Chinese. What good is it? Well, you could always donate all this worthless stuff to charity. That's always good for a tax write-off. Gus, what are they doing in our home? <clears throat> well, I, I was trying to, to find that out. It might be best to liquidate the entire estate. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps we could check the zoning regulations and turn this property into something lucrative, like, uh, like a health spa or an old folks' home. Oh, now you're thinking along the right lines. Well, how about a bed and breakfast lodge? Rigsby's Resorts. We could get some neon lights. Neon lights? Mr. and Mrs. Rigsby, may I remind you that the court hearing isn't until tomorrow? Well, that's right. And uh, until then, you people are, are trespassing on my property. Now, get out. Indeed. Well. Come, Victor, Mrs. Sims. Let these commoners enjoy their last day of the good life. We'll be back tomorrow to clean out whatever's left. To the future. To the future. Victor, we did it. In a few hours, we'll be millionaires. Victor, okay. oh, knock it off! Oh, my back! Uh. No. No. Don't leave me behind. There's room on the lifeboat. Take me. Take me. This could be my chance. The water. 
The water! Don't sail without me! Swim for it, Howard. Stroke, stroke, kick, kick. You're getting closer, you can do it. Stroke, kick, stroke, kick. Good, Howard, getting closer. Oh, oh, oh. oh no! No! Oh. Oh. Stroke, no. get up, stroke, kick. Oh. When he gets going, so do I. I gotta get some hands. I don't know what's being. What's, what's, what's wrong? Debbie, after we moved. Hello? Bart, it's me, Leo. Leo? Leo, is it really you? We thought you were dead. Is that Leo? Oh, yes, it's definitely me. As Mark Twain once said, the reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Where is he? Where is he? Where are you? Where are you? I was just about to tell you. Now listen, there's no time to lose. First, get a paper and pencil. Veronica, get me a paper and pencil. Got it. Shoot. Write this number down. 311-555-6674. It's the phone number I'm calling from. The man who's holding me here is named Howard Piggins. Piggins, got it. Good. He's kind of out to lunch, so be careful. There is no telling what he might do. The guy who's holding him is having lunch. <laughs> oh, not having lunch. Out to... Oh, never mind. Here are some more clues. I can hear the bells of a church. I know it's very close. Wait a minute. Church. C-H-U-R... Oh, give me that pencil. You're too slow. No, I can do it. Please don't fight. I really don't have much time. Are you listening? I'm listening. You said not to fight. I'm near railroad tracks. The train comes by every day at 1, just when the church bells ring, so I don't think I'm more than half a mile from the tracks. Train tracks, got it. And one last thing. There's a seafood restaurant nearby. I'm sure I can smell it. OK, Leo, we'll get there as soon as we can. Now, you can use the money that's in the wealth of the nations to get here, so please hurry. OK, bye, Leo. Let's go to the mansion. The operator said there's a Howard Piggins in Richmond at this number. Only there's no address listed. That's where all the other clues will come in handy. Let's go. Wait a minute. How? Richmond is over 50 miles away. Don't worry. We've got plenty. Leo thinks of everything. <laughs> church on the other side of town. How can we be sure this is the right one? The train, the train! What time is it? One o'clock, just like Leo said. He must be nearby. Then we have to find a seafood restaurant. This way! Let's go the back way. Good idea. Just make sure. 
make sure no one sees us. How about this one? Seems quiet. Should we try and look in? All right, you go first. We both go together. All right. Leo. Leo, are you here? <laughs> this way for too many houses around but we've got to we've got to think inch by inch life is a cinch yard by yard it's very hard we can't check every house in the area what if they all have mean dogs we need more clues than a church a train and a fish restaurant we have one peanut shells they were in the house the day after Leo disappeared <laughs> They stop over there. Do you see anything? Nothing. Try that one. Leo! It's him! It's him! Go around to the front door. Let's go! to see you again. Well, I couldn't be happier myself, but we really got to get out of here fast. Howard could come back any minute. Uh-oh, it's him. Hi there, kitty cat. I finally figured out why you're not eating. You haven't been liking what I've been serving. So I went out and got you something special. Special. Liver. Yeah. Now I want you to be happy, because when you're happy, I'm happy. Achoo. Howard, don't take another step. Either I'm hearing things, or that liver's a little too fresh. Your hearing is fine, Howard. Oh, no. I finally lost it. I've gone off the deep end. I knew I couldn't stay well for long. Yes, but now that you've hit bottom, there's no place to go but up. A cat. I'm listening to a talking cat. Well, I'm hallucinating. I should have listened to the doc. Nah, Rigsby's a phony. Work with me. You? Absolutely. You know, I've studied a great deal of psychology. I'm really quite an expert. Now, lie down. Lie down. Well, why not? I've studied psychology. Like this? Very good. All right. Now, why don't we delve into your subconscious, Howard? Let's try to find out where you're so unhappy, why you're such a unique individual, all right? Well, it all began about a year ago. Good. Tell me about it. I had this simple little problem of daydreaming all the time. People at work thought I was lazy. Then one day, I saw Rigsby's ad in the back of a comic. Then I became a klepto. So I decided to I started stealing out. things down at the mall. Then I got arrested. But when my wife left me, that was the final straw. Don't you see, Howard? There's nothing wrong with you at all. There isn't? No, you're just a very sensitive person who has been responding poorly to a number of badly chosen hypnotic suggestions. Just be rational, Howard. Control your temper, don't be so insecure and self-conscious, and uh, above all, speak to your wife. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Doc. I'll do that. Hey, you know, I'm feeling better already. Uh, uh, that's wonderful, but unfortunately, your session is over and we have to go. Go? Where? Don't worry, I'll tell you all about it in the car. Bart? <laughs> At last. 
How long have you two been there? Hurry. There's only one hour left. So Rigsby's a quack, eh? I should have known by the way he always overcharged me. Okay, buddy, let's see your license. License? <laughs> oh, you must be joking, officer. Who'd give me a license? Well, with the way I drive, we Quiet. Need... Yes. Please, officer. I'm Barbaric, and this is Leo the Cat. And we're really in a hurry. Leo the Cat? The richest cat in the world? Yes. Yep, this is him. So, a speeder and a pair of cat thieves. Okay, let's go. You're all under arrest. Au revoir, sweetheart. Judge Hooten. Please be seated. Court is now in session. The next case is Rigsby's versus the estate of Oscar Colmeyer. picture of me and Uncle Oscar on a fishing trip last spring. I love that man like a father and his cat like a son. Mr. Rigsby. And with us today is Honest Reverend Green, who was at my home the night the missing party disappeared. Yes. Mr. Rigsby, Wait, wait, please. Your Honor. I've got plenty more evidence to show you. Mister, you've got to get to the courthouse. Sorry, kid, off duty. But it's urgent. Yeah? Shows my lunch, pal. Here, dinner's on it. Now let's get going. You got it. A tear of joy to my eye every time I look at this kitty. Here, my favorite play, 
cat on a hot tin roof. Oof. Makes me shudder thinking of how that poor creature burns his furry little paws on that metal shack. It's really sad. You should read the play. And here, Your Honor, I have a receipt from the Humane Society for a generous contribution I made last Mr. year. Mr. Rigsby. No, no, please, Your Honor. It's the least I can do. Mr. Rigsby, this is all very nice, very thorough. But it has nothing to do with the issue at hand. Mr. Colmire's estate has been left to his cat. This is fact. Today's case concerns whether or not this cat is of able body to accept his inheritance. His presence in this courtroom today will determine that. What time is it now? Ten after four. Then the hearing has already started. Hey, mm. pal, can't you drive any faster? <laughs> Say, why don't you watch where you're going, man? Hey, no way, Jose. This bike is my job, my life, my existence. Use that in your box. Deal. So then, this cat is nowhere to be found. Well, that's the way of cats, but the law is the law, and I must render a decision. Please, Your Honor, we, we are still searching. Uh, all we need is a little more time. Stay out of the way, out of the way! Here comes the other cat! has anything more to say, I'll render my decision. Since the named beneficiary to the Colmeyer estate has failed to appear... I must hold for the contestants the Rigsby. Yes! 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 What's the meaning of this? Mister! This is Leo the Cat! It's a lie! This cat's a fraud, an imposter! No, he's not. This is Leo. We know him anywhere. No, no, Your Honor, I object. Let me... Order in the court. This is him, sir. He's Leo. Who is this boy? Uh, this is my son, Bart, Your Honor, and that is Leo the cat. It is, Your Honor. I should know, considering I was with them for the past week. Well, if this is the cat in question, things change considerably. The court then must acknowledge the deceased's intent and hold for the name beneficiary, Leo Kohlmeyer. Cat keeps his estate. You can't do that. You're about to give the money to me. The law is the law, remember? Oh, bailiff, remove this man from my courtroom. No, no, you can't do that. No, Your Honor, no. Poor Victor, now you've blown everything, including our 25 grand. Leo shall keep his inheritance, Mr. Rigsby, and he shall live in Mr. Colmeyer's home, and the Barretts shall remain his caretakers. And live in the big house with him. And live in the big house with him. Case is dismissed. Great Lakes on the border of Canada and America. The longest river in the United States is a mighty Mississippi. It is over 2,300 miles long. In the days of the pioneers, the Mississippi was traveled on by many steam baths. Bart? Just seeing if you were listening. Bart, look, a postcard for Mom and Dad. Dear kids, England is great. I saw my relatives, Big Ben, the Tower of London, and the Queen herself. Dad even offered to fix the squeaky wheels on her coach. That ought to set diplomatic relations back 200 years. I'm just glad your parents could find someone to watch after you while they're gone. Ready for dinner, folks? Let's see what gourmet dish your mother has stashed away for us. Leo, you're not going to believe this. Liver and onions. What? <laughs> Only kidding. Ta-da! Broiled lobster. Oh, thanks, everybody. <sighs> Thank you, Leo. You're the best friend anybody could ever have. On top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese. I, I lost, lost my, my poor meatball, meatball when somebody sneezed. It rolled off the table and onto the floor. And then my poor meatball rolled right out the door. It rolled through the garden and under a bush. And 
And then my poor meeple was nothing but 